Hello everyone and in our previous video we learnt about what is exactly cell transformation that the changes that take place in the genetic material then what are the characteristics involved in the cell transformation and then what are the, what is immortalization what is exactly aberrant growth control contact inhibition then we learnt about the genetic instability these were the some of the characteristics that we learnt in detail so if you have not watched that video you can go and check the video so that you'll have more better conceptual understanding with my with the previous video so coming to the cell cloning now now cell cloning we know that the traditional culture technique cells are heterogeneous in nature and isolation of pure cell strain is important for various purposes so the cell cloning it involves the process that is connected with the production of a population of cells that is derived from a single cell so cloning of continuous cell is much easy than compared to that of the primary culture and the finite cell lines but there are certain limitations for cloning and culture cells that are derived from the normal tissues now these cells survive for a limited number of generations and therefore cloning might not result in any significant number of cell so the cloning of continuous cell lines due to their transformed status is much easier so that the transformed cell have higher cloning efficiency compared to the normal cells now cloning can be carried out by two approach one approach is the monolayer culture and the second one is the suspension culture coming to the monolayer approach now monolayer culture petri dishes multiple plates or flasks can be used for cloning by monolayer culture and it is relatively easy to remove the individual colonies of cells from the surfaces where they are attached so this is one is the monolayer culture while the other one is the suspension culture now what happens in suspension culture is that the cloning can be carried out in suspension by seeding cells into viscous solutions like the metho cell or gels like agar and as the daughter cells are formed in the suspension they may remain intact and form colonies in suspension so that is the suspension culture so cell cloning what it is exactly it is the process that is connected with the production of a population of cells that is derived from a single cell that is cell cloning there are certain limitations to cell cloning but there are two approaches that are carried out for cell cloning one is the monolayer culture where the petri dish or the multi multi, multi well plates or flasks can be used and the other one is the suspension culture where it is carried out in suspension by seeding cells into viscous solutions or gels like agar and as the daughter cells are formed in the suspension they remain intact and form colonies in suspension so this is the basic idea about cell cloning that what it is cell cloning and what how it is exactly carried out now coming to the next one dilution cell cloning now dilution cloning is the most commonly used technique for cloning of monolayer cells and they it is carried out with different stages now there are different stages that are involved in the dilution cell cloning we will learn it them one by one now uh, i would uh, tell i would better request you that uh, you see the diagram when i am explaining so that you will have a better conceptual understanding first what happens is the trypsinization of cells takes place at the log phase to produce the single cell suspensions so in order to produce the single cell suspension first the trypsinization of cells takes place which takes place at the log phase so the trypsinization is taking place at the log phase further what happens is the dilution of the cells takes place to about 10 to 100 cells per ml dilution of cells to about 10 to 100 cells per ml takes place that is the second step the third step that is carried out is the seeds so the cells in multi dishes or the petri dishes or the uh, plastic bottles so 
feed the cells in multiple dishes petri dishes or plastic bottle now from the figure you can see that first what is taking place that uh, at lock phase the uh, uh, trypsinization is taking of cells is taking place uh, to produce the single cell suspension then further the dilution of the cells takes place to about 10 to 100 cells per ml and then seeding of the cells is done to in multiple dishes petri dishes or plastic bottles that is the third step the fourth fourth step is they are incubated under appropriate conditions for about one to three weeks so what is done further the incubation is done for one to three weeks then further the isolation of individual colonies is carried out so what happens in dilution cloning cell cloning is first that the uh, cells Trypsinization of cells is done at lock phase. Further, the single cell suspension is diluted, which is 10 to 100 cells per ml. Then, third step is the seeding of cells takes place with the help of multi well dish or petri dish or the plastic bottle. Fourth, they are incubated and grown for about one to three weeks. And further, the isolation of individual colonies is done. So, colonies are isolated. So, this is nothing but the dilution cell cloning. This is how the dilution cell cloning is carried out. So if an exam question comes that what is exactly dilution cell cloning and how it is carried out with the help of this diagram you have to uh, first you have to give the basics of cell cloning then some limitations to it then now it depends upon the mark if it comes for five mark then write that what is exactly cell cloning uh, basic definition of cell cloning and then uh, start uh, writing uh, drawing the diagram which is given for the dilution cell cloning and explain dilution cell cloning but if cell cloning is coming cell cloning and dilution cell cloning is coming and it is for more marks then better it, it is that you write the cell cloning basics and then the two approaches and then the what is dilution cell cloning explain that in detail so this is dilution cell cloning now coming to the stimulation of plating efficiency. Now plating efficiency, what it is exactly, it represents the percentage of cells that are seeded at subculture that give rise to colonies. So the percentage of the cells seeded at subculture that give rise to colonies is stimulation of plating efficiency. And the plating efficiency and the cloning efficiency, they are identical if each colony is derived from the single cell so if each colony is derived from the single cell then they are said to be identical what is said to be identical that is uh, cloning efficiency and plating efficiency now the plating efficiency is around 10 percent for continuous cell lines while for primary cultures and finite cell lines it is quite low that is 0 0.5 to 5 percent or sometimes it is even zero so several attempts are made to improve the plating efficiency in the culture lab. But these approaches are based on the assumptions that the cells at low density require more nutrients and growth factor. The stimulation of plating efficiency uh, to culture factors, condition medium and feeder layers. We learn that in the uh, further video. So this is about the cell cloning, dilution cloning and then uh, the stimulation of the plating efficiency further we'll learn about the culture factor suspension culture uh, suspension cloning how it is done feeder layer so we'll learn more in detail about them so if you like the video don't forget to click on subscribe button below and don't forget to share the video thank you for watching